Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits on Saturn's moon number five. Cautiously, they make their way toward a criminal who has already made one attempt upon their lives. Smoking rockets, what was that? Space grenades. Well, if you hadn't pulled me down, we'd have got some chunks of rock right through our suits. We can't back out now. Let's go. Yes, sir. Hold it, Corey. I'll get you this time. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Lost Thunder. Hey there, space patroller. Hold up a minute. What's all the rush? Oh, hi, Captain Tuso. I'm in a hurry to get to the grocery. I bet you I know why. You're after more of those swell interplanetary space coins. I hear jingling right there in your own pocket. Yes, sir. Are they ever neat? Fun to swap and save. Got almost a whole set, and I want lots more. So long, Captain Tufel. Got to blast off fast. Space Patrollers, how about you? Have you started building up your own space coin collection? You get a space coin inside of every new package of Hot Ralston. And say, have you started powering up with a good hot breakfast these cold mornings? A good hot breakfast. That means a bowl full or two of good hot Ralston. Instant or regular. The hot whole wheat energy cereals that give you important vitamins and minerals in every spoonful. And taste out of this world, too. Yes, there's just no other cereal that gives you so much power, yet tastes so good. So, Space Patrollers, you blast off fast for your grocer. Get yourself some good hot Ralston, instant or regular. And look for the new packages with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and with the neat interplanetary space coin on the inside. Start building up your own space coin collection right away and start powering up with good hot Ralston today. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Thunder. Buzz Corey is at a criminal rehabilitation center on the planet Venus, conducting his annual inspection when he receives a strange request to one of the doctors. A patient named Don Flake has asked permission to speak to him. Right now, Buzz and Mr. Dead Happy are seated in the spacious lounge of the discharge section talking to the young man. It's awfully good of you to see me, Commander. What is it you wanted to talk to me about, Flake? Well, let's... Strange part, I don't know exactly. I, I suppose I should be happy about being released. But I'm not. I'm worried. There's nothing to worry about. You have a job and a place to stay. Sure, you'll be a draftsman at spacecraft plant number two on Mars. It's all arranged. Well, that isn't what bothers me. I have the feeling I haven't told the authorities everything. If that's all that's the matter, you can stop worrying. When you were arrested, you were given a brainograph test. Everything you knew about the crime you committed was on microtape. Sure, you couldn't have held anything back if you wanted to. Still, I... I have a feeling that I know something unpleasant, something evil. Dealing with what? A certain place or a person? Well, that's the trouble. It, it's nothing definite. If there is something about a crime in your subconscious mind, it would have shown up in the first test. Well, maybe it'll come to me later, after I'm released. It may, but the chances are it isn't very serious. I hope not. My diary. I'll go through that when I get settled. Your diary? Yeah. Before I... Well, before I was arrested, I kept a detailed record of everything I did. Perhaps some entry in my diary may jog my memory. Well, that's possible. If it turns out to be important, let me know. I certainly will, Commander. And thanks very much for talking. Good luck, Blake. Come on, Happy, we'd better get back to Terra. A few days later, young Don Blake returns to his home a short distance from the spacecraft plant in Lowell City on the planet Mars. And as he enters the comfortable living room... Who are you? Hello, Blake. Nice place you've got here. Well, how did you get in? You just walked in. The door wasn't locked. No. No, I, I don't like locked doors. <laughs> I can understand why. You haven't told me who you are. Doesn't matter. I know who you are and uh, where you've been for the past nine months. Well, that's no secret, but I can't see it's any of your business. Now, don't get thirsty. I'm here to do you a favor. A big favor. What kind of a favor? You have some information I can use. 
I'm willing to pay for it. Information about my work? If that's what you're after, you can get out of here right now. Calm down, Blake. Calm down. The information I want has nothing to do with your present job. It's about something that happened about ten months ago. You mean my... Bobby, I said it. No, Blake. What's that? Tell me. Does the name Condor mean anything to you? Condor? You associated with the spaceship. No. I think hard. Did you ever have any dealings with the pilot of a tramp spaceship called the Condor? What? No, I'm... I'm afraid I can't help you now. If you'll be good enough to go, I'll... Hold on, hold on. Let's not give up so easily. The memory is sometimes a freakish thing. Isn't that why you once kept a diary? That... How do you know that? I know many things about you, Blake. He wrote many trivial things in that diary. The titles of books you read, the names of chance acquaintances. Yes, that's right, but I... And the name of the pilot of the Condor is very likely in your diary. Or at least a clue to his identity. I'm sure you're mistaken. It won't hurt to let me look through the book. And that's what you're willing to pay me for. Well, not entirely. The money will be for you to keep this conversation a secret. How about it, Blake? I don't like this at all. You won't even tell me who you are, yet you offer me money for information on a purely personal, private document. No, no, I'm I'm not interested. You better think it over, Blake, for your own good. Is that a threat? That crime you committed a few months ago. Did it ever occur to you that someone may have been behind the scenes, quietly arranging events to your advantage, huh? sort of uh, paving the way for you? No, no, it was my own idea. I was in it by myself. It was... Just an accident that I found a man who could help me dispose of the loot. That's accident, all. wasn't it? Blake, that man was there when you needed him because I planned a complex chain of events. But I got caught. Everything stolen was recovered. I planned that, too. Your petty crime was arranged to distract attention from a much bigger crime. I, I don't believe it. That's unimportant. My plan was complex to protect myself. There were many people involved, each as ignorant of the master plan as you were. An unforeseen accident occurred. I had to put my chessboard away for ten months, so to speak, until I could put a certain pawn back into play. And I'm the pawn, you have it? Exactly. Your diary probably contains the small bit of information I need to win the game. If you don't help me, well, I can easily arrange another series of events around you. You, you can't make me commit another crime, no, no. I wouldn't be too sure, Blake. In any case, I could easily arrange a crime in which you would be the victim. But it would be a shame if your second chance in life were to be cut short, Blake. I'll give you 48 hours to think it over. If you're smart, you'll give me the diary when I come back. Several hours later, on the man-made planet Terra, Buzz and Happy are working late at Space Patrol headquarters. I'll get it to you. Commander Corey's office. Good afternoon, man. I'm just calling. I'll get some answers. Sir, it's Don Blake. Blake? Oh, from the rehab center. Yes, sir. He wants to talk to you. He says it's important. All right, sir. This is Commander Corey. How are you, Blake? Commander, I've got to talk to you. Where are you? Terra Space Force. All right, come on up. I'll tell the duty officer to let you in. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't dare do this. What's the matter? Are you in trouble? Not yet, but I, I can't tell you over the phone. It's about the matter I spoke in Venus. It involves a serious crime. I just got from Mars, and I may be followed if I leave the spaceport. Followed by whom? Commander, I, I'm on your gate 22. I'll get down here right away. All right, Blake. I'll be there. Corey out. Come on, Happy. Gate 22 at the big Terra spaceport is far down the line, away from the regular passenger gate. Unobtrusively, Buzz and Happy make their way to the appointed place. Buzz listens to Blake's story of the strange visitor and his vague but alarming threat. Well, I thought I'd better come here and tell you all about the whole story. So you never saw this man before? No, sir, I'm positive. And he didn't tell you his name? No. Where is the diary? I've got it right here inside my jacket. Better give it to me. Yeah, glad to. Maybe I, I've got too much imagination, but ever since I talked to that man, I've had the feeling that he's guilty of some crime. The crime I helped to commit. Don't draw any conclusions until we get all the facts. Happy. Yes, sir. See that Mr. Blake gets back safely to Mars. Put him aboard the next passenger ship out of Terra. Commander, you're not going to send me back to Mars. We'll be guarded. When that fellow shows up for his appointment, we'll nab him. Now go along with you, Dan. All right, Commander. Don't lose any of you. It's him. That's the man. You're very foolish to try this, Blake. Now, Commander, give me that diary. 
Why should you be interested in this man's diary? Could stalling. Don't make any move toward your weapons. If I'm forced to use this blaster, it'll attract attention. Others might be hurt. The diary, please. All right. I'm anxious to see what you shall make of it, Mr. Uh, Corbett. Please, Corbett. That may mean nothing to you. Not yet, and it never will. Move toward that park surface car. Casually, please. Come along, Blake. And be careful not to get between the space of Pullman and my gun. <laughs> what are you going to do, Corbett? I'll explain in due time. Keep moving, gentlemen. So this is the car. Commander, you and the cadet get in the back. Come on. You'll drive, Blake. I'll keep our friends covered. Go on, Blake. Do as I tell you. All right. Now, the slightest move from either of you, and you'll find out what a blast gun does at close range. Start the car, Blake. <laughs> Drive through the gate, slowly, just as though we were driving out to the ship. Turn left, there, at the far end of the port. There's no ship out here. No. Nothing but a fuel storage tank. Now, you two in the back, lean forward. Come on. All right, Corey, here's yours. Hey, what's the idea? (laughs) Now, Blake. Step out of the car. No. You heard me. No. Jump unless you want to be part of the accident. What do you mean? Get out. I'll follow as soon as I head the car right for that fuel tank. Now get out. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Listen to that football player kick that ball. And listen to that crowd cheer. Power, that's what he's got. More power to him and more power to you. Power to think fast and act fast. And to get it from a power breakfast with a swell-tasting whole wheat power cereal, Good Hot Ralston, instant or regular. More power to you because one ounce of delicious Hot Ralston gives you 20% of the vitamin B1 and 11% of the iron you need all day long. And that's not all. Hot Ralston gives you all the power of whole wheat and twice as much power from the heart of the wheat. That's why a good breakfast with Hot Ralston gives you extra protein for powerful muscles, extra vitamins for sturdy growth and steady nerves. So join the power team. Get Hot Ralston, instant or regular, at your grocer's today. No other cereal gives you so much power, yet tastes so good. So more power to you from Good Hot Ralston. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Condor. For a reason he is not fully divulged, the man calling himself Lee Corbett is after a diary belonging to Don Blake, a young man recently released from a criminal rehabilitation center. While Buzz and Appy were talking to Blake in a dimly lit portion of the spaceport, Reese Corbett appeared, and drawing a blast gun, took the diary and then forced the three men into a surface car. After knocking out Buzz and Happy with the butt of his gun, Corbett ordered Blake to jump from the moving car. Then Corbett leaped out, leaving Buzz and Happy in the car, which is now roaring across the spaceport toward a fuel storage tank. Dazed from a vicious blow, Cadet Happy raises his hand. Oh, oh, my head. Look at Rocket. Who's driving? Hey, Commander, we're headed right for a fuel tank. Grab the wheel, Happy. We just missed it, Commander. Of course it was... Of course it was certainly anxious to get rid of us. And Blake must have been right about that diary being important. Now, of course, it's got Blake and the diary. Head for the guard shack near Gate 5 and we'll alert space control. Across the spaceport, Corbett and Blake, bruised by their leap from the moving surface car, watch the car careen around the strip and finally come to a stop. Blake... I heard it when he jumped. You'll get a lot worse than a bad leg if you don't hurry. We've got to get to my spaceship and blast off before Corey alerts the control tower. Blast off where? Never mind. Just get moving. In the guard shack, Commander Corey orders space control to ground all private cruisers, then orders a careful check of all passenger ships. Gate 5, Corporal Niven here. Yes, Captain. Just a moment, sir. Commander Corey. Yes? 
For you, sir. Captain Barton in the tower. Thanks. Now, what is it, Captain? What? Didn't that order get through? I see. All right, Captain. I'll be in Colonel Ryan's office at Fort Headquarters until further notice. Hurry out. Got away, huh? Yeah. Corbett used the false identification call to the tower. He must have been ready for this kind of a getaway. We get through the locks before the tower noticed the mistake. Couldn't we blast off after it? Yes, but if he has Blake with him, we'd be at a disadvantage. First, let's see if we can find out what Corbett is up to. Well, how are we going to do that? We well, must have pulled off some time. It's about the time Blake was arrested. Probably a major robbery that's still unsolved. We checked the record for that particular time. We might find out which one it was. Right. And then there's this mystery word, Condor. It's connected somehow to a pilot or a tramp spaceship. Well, uh, uh, spaceship registry might run that down for us. Yeah, if it could, Corbett wouldn't wait ten months for Blake to be released. Oh. Condor must be a nickname known to a limited circle. I'll contact a few pilots and spread the word around. we we'll find out who or what the Condor is before Corbett does. We can lay a trap for him. Elsewhere, avoiding the space lanes, a private cruiser speeds away from Terra toward the outer planet. With frequent glances at the view scope, Reese Corbett sets the controls on automatic pilot, then turns to Don Blake. All right, you've had plenty of time to read over your entries in the diary. Find anything out about the con? No, no, it's no use, Corbett. I, I couldn't help you even if I wanted to. You're not qualified to decide that. While I was making it easy for you to get away with your poultry haul, I had another gang working on a job of real value. What was it? Never mind. At one time, your loot and mine were aboard the same ship. And the valuable stuff was transferred by another group of intermediaries. That's where the slip of a curve. What makes you think the information is in my diary? Because, Blake, you are an observant young man, but not a very analytical one. You collect facts, but you don't source them. Your mind is like a sheet of old-fashioned fly paper. It catches everything that touches it, but digests nothing. That's why I selected you above a hundred others. And I'll read your diary aloud. When you come to the right entry, I'll recognize it. Go on. Start with the entry for... In the spaceport office on Terra, Cadet Happy brings Commander Corey a sheaf of reports he's just received by spaceophone. Here it is, sir. A list of crimes that occurred during the period you mentioned. Oh, thanks, Happy. I put a check mark on this one, sir. Hmm. One million space credits stolen from the underplanet bank. I think we've covered the date. Our suspects arrested so far have been released as having no knowledge of the crime. It's pretty hot, doesn't it? Yes, Hap, it does. It all ties in with the information I have on the condor. Got a lead, Hap. One of our men got hold of a commercial pilot who would talk. You mean you found out what the condor is? Yes. It was an old tramp spaceship. No one has seen or heard of it for several months. It was owned by an old-time pilot named Stubby Sykes. Was well, it he disappear with the ship? No, he's now working as a mechanic. A mechanic? Where? You'll find out when we get to the Jupiter City spaceport. Let's go. Hours later, the Terra 5 lands at Jupiter City spaceport, and Buzz and Happy go immediately to a rambling structure bearing the sign of Pear Shop, number six. A foreman points toward a short, stocky, middle-aged man engaged in straightening a section of rocket engine housing. Excuse me, are you? Stubby Sykes? Yep. Could I, uh, could I talk to you a minute? Uh, sure. Glad of a chance to rest. Swing the hammers, heavy work. It must be. I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol, and this is Cadet Happy. Hello, Mr. Sykes. Howdy. Won't shake hands. Pretty busy. Oh. Well, say, isn't there an easier way to straighten that metal, Mr. Sykes? I mean, with a machine instead of a hammer? Son, there's three ways of doing a job. Easy way, hard way, and right way. I'm doing it the right way. I guess I got to. <laughs> I guess you did. Mr. Sykes. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, fire rockets. Do you ever own a spaceship called the Condor? Did you, Mr. Sykes? Yeah. Boy, what happened to it? Ship can't last forever, Commander. You know that. Yes, yeah, but what happened to the Condor? It's an old ship. Done its work and had its day. Cracked up. Smashed. So, now I'm a mechanic. Did that answer your question? Pardon me. When did this happen? Oh, ten months ago, more or less. Where? On Saturn's fifth moon. Controls wouldn't work. Tried to land to make repairs. Kinda cracked up. I finally hailed a small lunar cruiser. With a real smart Alec pilot. He was lucky I didn't toss him through his own nose port with the cracks he made about the condor. I'm sorry about your ship, Mr. Oh, uh, was any of the cargo salvaged? Cargo? Nothing but junk. Not even a payload. A few hundred pounds of processed food and a few cases of tools. Nobody'd bother going after it. Record's still there. Mr. Sykes, would you help me find the condor? 
Well, right now I'm on overtime. Got to get this job done today. How about tomorrow morning? All right. Tomorrow morning. Fine. I'll make arrangements for the form. However, the next morning, after a visit to the airport, Happy returned with disturbing news. Commander, Mr. Sykes is gone. Are you sure, Hap? I just checked with the foreman. He got aboard a spaceship about an hour ago with another man. Sykes' roommate saw him, and the roommate knows everybody that Sykes knows, and this fellow was a complete stranger. In the description, he sounds like Reese Carter. We'll find out. Get to the ship, Hap. We're blasting off of Saturn number five. A private space cruiser flies low over the craggy surface of Saturn's fifth moon. Reese Corbett is at the control as Stubby Sykes scans the craters and deep ravines. Yeah, it ought to be sighted found her pretty quick now, Mr. Corbett. Fine. Hope I did right in not telling that uh, mandatory fellow I was going with you. You'd have been foolish to tell him, Sykes. The new salvage law gives the space patrol 100% of the proceeds from the salvage of wrecked spaceships and cargoes. Corey wouldn't have to give you a single credit, even if the condor is your own ship. No, I didn't know about that law. I haven't been following that end of business lately. Lucky I located you in time, Sykes. Never did know who owned part of that cargo I was hauling. Never thought it was worth going after. I was deceived by a dishonest agent working for me at the time. It has taken me ten months to find you. There she is. There's the condor down there in that crater just way left her. Get out the spacesuit, Sykes. I'll land the ship close to the wreck so we don't have far to carry the cargo. Decelerating about be preparing to land. Hey, you're right, sir. They sighted the condor. The wreck shows up in the view scope, way up in the corner. Uh, grid 9-8. Yes, I see it. Now the quickest to land close to them without giving them a chance to blast off. We can come in low and keep the sun behind us. Yeah, they won't be able to hear our rockets as long as there isn't any atmosphere. You sure your suit space phone is set to our secret frequency? We may have to use the regular frequency to talk to them, but I don't want them picking us up so we're ready. On the surface of Saturn's fifth moon, Sykes and Corbett stand amid the wreckage of the old spaceship. Scattered about are half a dozen large crates, which Corbett examines carefully. Unnoticed by either man is a tiny black dot against the bright disk of the sun, a dot that grows steadily larger. Well, we won't have to move all of these crates, Sykes. I guess you know what you're doing, Mr. Corbett, but none of this stuff looks very valuable to me. Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll get the 500 credits, I promise you, the moment we're through loading and back in the ship. Uh, that isn't a life for you. Here I am, a mechanic, getting more for lugging a few crates than I got for many an interplanetary trip as captain of the old Connor. <laughs> I couldn't have found the Condor without you. Uh, besides, I may need your help to destroy the wreckage. Huh? I don't need destroying anymore. Three space grenades will blast the old hunk to pieces, and the space patrol will never find it. Well, it hardly seems necessary, Mr. Corbett. What do you care for? Come on, guys. Right. Let's get to work. Help me with this crate. All right. You're the boss. Hey, over there. Where'd that other ship come from? Darn if it didn't land without me noticing. Corey's ship. Those two fellows in spacesuits, sir. Must be Corey and his cadet. <laughs> well, we was here first, so I guess... Don't stand there, Jabri. Stop. Take one of these space grenades. Hey, say, ho- hold on. What are you going to do? This. <laughs> Corey, are you crazy? Smoking rockets, what was that? A space grenade. Oh, if you hadn't pulled me down, we'd have got some of those chunks of rock right through our suits. We can't back out now. Get behind this rock, Happy. It looks like Sykes is on our side. He's pulling Corbett's arm. Corbett's got another grenade. Shall we rush them? Yes, from above. Huh? With low gravity on this moon, we can reach Corbett in one leap. Uh, well, yes, sir, but we'll come down awful slow. We'll use our jet packs to force us down quickly. All right, Happy, jump! Hey, he missed us again, thanks to Sykes. Use your jet pack, Hap. Hit the ground as soon as you can. Yes, sir. Uh, now, tell me, where's Blake? He's in the ship, locked up in the compartment. He's all right. Better be. Uh, Commander? Oh, yes, Sykes. I tried to stop Corbett from harming you. I don't know what he's up to, honest to him. I believe you. Happy, show Sykes what Corbett came here for. Show him what's in that damaged crate. Oh, yes, sir. Here, Sykes. Take a look at this. Uh, space credits? Bales of it. A million of them, Sykes. You and Blake can split the reward. Reward? I get a reward? Certainly. Blake led us to you, and you led us to the money. Oh, Condor. Seems like she's worth more busted up on the ground than she is flying. Well, with your share of the reward, you can probably get another ship, Mr. Sykes. Nope. 
I reckon I'm just like the conjurer here. Better off on the ground. It's all the same to you. Buy me a new hammer. A big one. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. Commander Corey here. Space Patroller Kevin Rogers here. Space Patroller Rogers and I are just finishing up the most important meal of the day. Yes, sir. Just had a power breakfast. And a power breakfast always means a big bowlful or two of good hot Ralston. Instant Ralston or regular Ralston. Those wonderful hot whole wheat energy cereals that give you twice as many bodybuilding elements from the... Heart of the wheat. Right. Good hot Ralston does give you all the vitamins and minerals that any other cereal provides and twice as much power from the... Heart of the wheat. Right again, Space Patroller Rogers. And it tastes just as good as it is good for you. So take it from me, Space Patrollers, and I've investigated every other cereal in the universe. No other cereal gives you so much power, yet tastes so good. That's why it's the official hot cereal of the Space Patrol. So head for your grocers, get a package of good hot Ralston right away. And remember, you get a swell interplanetary space coin inside every package. And now a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have entered a warehouse on the planet Venus to rescue an abducted explorer. As they creep up a flight of stairs, two criminals lurk above them behind a huge barrel. Easy now, Happy. They've got Marcus in the car somehow. Now, the top of the stairs. Get your hands up. We're space patrolmen. Come up and get it. Come on, Happy. Come the barrel, Perry. Roll it down on us. Commander, look out! Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, The Venus Thulania Mystery, when Instant Wilson and regular Austin again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Stephen Robertson, and Joe Cranston. Dick Tufeld speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on the famous jet plane assigned to the vital Air Force mission of defending America's homeland, Lockheed F-94C Starfire. In a moment, we'll hear from Tony LeVere, the well-known record-breaking test pilot on the Starfire. Within seconds after warning, this radar-controlled interceptor can be off the ground and streaking to 45,000 feet or higher. Packing 48 rockets, it can fly and fight in sunshine or darkness at speeds of more than 600 miles per hour. Now, Tony LeVere, tape recorded this morning at a California air base. You know, good health is important to a test pilot, and I have to stay in top condition. I get lots of rest and eat plenty of good food. That's why I like a good cereal for breakfast, like rice checks or wheat checks. They have real energy, and they taste swell. Why don't you try them? No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Tony LeVere, Joe Lynch, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.